Hi, we are now going to see how we can load some uh, measurements into the WASP Climate Analyst and generate a mean, observed mean wind climate, which we can later use in WASP. And uh, we have some data here, uh, some time series, once for each year, and uh, they look a little like this. You have uh, um, some times stamps here and there's measurements for each 10 minutes and then you have measurements of speed, mean and standard deviation of a speed at 60 meter. I can also look at the headers here. So first uh, wind data for 60 meters, 40 and 20 and then we have a wind direction at 60 but not 40 and then 20 and at the end we have some temperature measurements. And um, we can go to uh, to the climate analyst. Our goal is to import all these data and then generate a mean wind climate uh, like this that would be viable distribution for different uh, sectors and uh, uh, then save this to a file. But uh, let's just uh, close this project and start a new one. And uh, I have a site here. I'll give it a position. Um, something like 40 degrees north and uh, 20 actually I don't know uh, quite where it is but uh, uh, let's pretend here I should say that if I say minus then north become south here and uh, the similar uh, for the longitude minus here would make it west and also I can click here on this Google Earth and then it will uh, uh, you can use this to check that you have the mast at the right position. So let's say that this is OK and then give the site a name. I'll call it a test site and uh, add some instruments. And the top level that was 60 meter, so I uh, type 60 meter here, that's important for the modeling. And then I need to import the data. And I should say that the data we, we are going to use don't have the header which we saw before because uh, this program it's uh, actually it reads the header and then it can guess uh, which are speed signals and which are direction. And uh, often uh, I just want to say uh, make it a little harder here and then we can see what we can do if we don't have this header. So I click here select data and then can I can right click and say import. I could also click on data on, on the main menu. And then here I select all the data sets and uh, start to importing them. And now it's reading the data. And uh, here we have the results. Uh, so he, this is where you would have the header if we haven't removed them. So there are a speed and something which is uh, not a speed it has found out. Uh, then there's direction. All this is correct but this was actually the standard deviation of a direction and not a speed so I need to correct this and the same here. And this was not a speed that was a temperature. So I'll make these changes. Now I have the tree and warmer signals and two uh, wind vane signals. So now it's uh, filtering the data. It's reading the or processing all the five files. That was the second one, and it's showing the 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 how many data it has actually been able to read. So it has accepted 100% here. That's very good. Uh, but uh, you need to be aware that this ma that might not always be the case. Then uh, here are some parameters for the recording. It has detected already that. Um, the recording interval was uh, 600 seconds or 10 minutes and then uh, you can actually say if the averaging time for the from the data logger maybe if that was different then you can correct this here and you can uh, give a discretization level with that uh, the number of uh, meaningful digits in in the in the signals here for this was a speed four digits and uh, the directions it had two digits. 
And I think actually this uh, we need perhaps to co break this here. So I'm changing this to 0 0.01 means that uh, is uh, the jumps in the step here. And uh, it's not a problem for these data set, but if you had a very coarse resolution here, then that could affect the histograms which we are uh, reading in a little if we uh, don't uh, compensate for this. So this is why you need the discretization with. You also have a chance to uh, uh, calibrate the data a little. Maybe you have received some data and later you get a, a new calibration for the thermometer, so you need maybe to scale it a little and give it an offset. You have the possibility to do this here. Uh, you can also change the, the level which you uh, are willing to recept, accept for this uh, signal. So for instance maybe if the anemometer can only read from 0 to 70 meter, maybe you have read, read this in the specification, then you should change this because that would help the program to detect where there are possible problems. And uh, there's something called a calm threshold for instance here with the wind vane, it's, uh, if it's very low wind speeds then maybe it's pointing in a, in a arbitrary direction. So you give it a threshold in uh, meters per second where you, have, where you know that it's uh, um, operating correctly. And also you can do the same for the speed signals here. I think here it's the program has just detected the lowest level of the recordings and uh, uh, so I can just use this. So I say apply changes and then it's applying the changes to the five files we have. And uh, then uh, we will go on uh, here and look at the at the import report uh, again, and then maybe something has changed if you have changed, for instance, changed the, the limits of acceptable data. Now, um, the next step is to uh, identify the right channels for the different uh, instrument groups. And I know for the 60 meter level, then it was the third, uh, third column here for the speed, and first of the direction columns. So now we have a, a pair of instruments which we can uh, analyze here. Um, we could also, um, there were no data f or direction data for the 40 meter level but we have the, the 20 meter level. We can add a group for this. And then the this was the lowest speed was at the, this column here, and you would have it should be paired with this direction here. And then we have our data here. Um, then next step would be to sort of uh, check the quality of the data. We can select the time series one by one and view the data set. Uh, like this, there's a polar plot here uh, that should look something like the expected uh, wind rows and uh, some time series of speed and direction and you can select a sub period either here by dragging in the climate or you can also use the selector here or the, the numbers here. And uh, if you want to look at the data as numbers then you can click on grid and then you get the numbers and you can look again at the input report to see if the, uh, there has been something uh, rejected automatically. And you should do this for all the data which you're going to use. And then another problem is that maybe you remember that you would, it would be best to work with a full number of years like this. Maybe here we have a, uh, our recordings is, is uh, not a full number of years. So then we would have to adjust the end here and uh, then we would have um, four uh, whole number of years like this. 
Uh, it could also be that there would be something missing in the middle, then you could m leave a hole here and then extend it at the end. And the way to do this inside the climate analyst is that you, uh, you're going to work with this... Uh, first you say you want to create a mean wind climate, so that's the research we need for WASP. There are also some other extreme wind climates which we're going to use in WASP engineering. But then uh, we could look here at time selection and then adjust this time range here. So maybe this is not a full number of years. I wanted to maybe start the, uh, in July first. And uh, that should be based on the quality of the data which I have seen in the in the when I inspected the data so I can make a subset of data here like like this and then I would have a full number of years and if I need to have two pairs then I can say add here and then uh, change the range of, of both periods here uh, I think it's okay with just one here so I say remove again and apply this and then uh, we can uh, to make absolute sure that we have got the right data then I select here in the hierarchy and right click and say recalculate and actually I think the numbers were already uh, correct so um, then maybe I should also there's say that there's this uh, the quality here you can uh, check this if these are not um, uh, small then that means that the histogram here is very different from the faded distribution. And there are two uh, columns. The first one is a comparison, for instance, here the of the mean speed, which is not uh, exactly the same here because that was not uh, a, a criterion of, of the fit. But, um, uh, and then the, this would be the, the duration of, of the of the, the bins in the histogram and then the corresponding probabilities of the fitted distribution. Uh, maybe the, you could also inspect the curve here visually and say that it's you would mainly like it to be a good fit here in the upper end of the distribution because that's where the turbines are operating. But uh, when you have made all these checks, you imported the data, you have uh, worked with the site giving it the correct position and you have sure to have the correct height and you have uh, specified a calm threshold and uh, um, given your thought about disparitization and then you have um, selected a whole number of years then you are ready to uh, to save this to file and I use the uh, data for the sample data and then it's suggesting a test size 60 meters that's okay with me and I could also save the project. Um, I'll go to desktop, test sample, and then call it uh, test sample case. Because then I would uh, be able to to go back and and do some more analysis if uh, I run into a problem. Um, and what can I say, if you don't want to work with 12 sectors, then you can go here, select uh, this in the hierarchy here, and uh, right click, and then say edit specification. And here you have the chance to change the number of sectors to 16. And uh, then you will get a, a new calculation here. And uh, you can also, if your company is also always working with 16, then you can go into options and then uh, say that this should be the default choice. But normally we recommend 12 sectors because that's a good compromise between a, a good sample in each sector and uh, also reasonable uh, resolution. Okay, I think that was all.